Called to be branches in Christ's body, we yearn to be connected to the vine. Called to be mustard bushes offering shade to God's creatures, we search for places to plant the seeds of faith. Called to be growing with God in the midst of this world's painful questions, we seek God's nurturing presence. Jesus said, this is what God's kingdom is like. It's as though someone scatters seeds on the ground, then sleeps and wakes nights and days, then sleeps and wakes night and day. The seed sprouts and grows, but the farmer doesn't know how. The earth produces crops all by itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full head of grain. Whenever the crop is ready, the farmer goes out to cut the grain because it's harvest time. He continued, What's a good image for God's kingdom? What parable can I use to explain it? Consider a mustard seed. When scattered on the ground, it's the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all vegetable plants. It produces such large branches that the birds in the sky are able to nest in its shade. With many such parables, he continued to give them the word as much as they were able to hear. He spoke to them only in parables, then explained everything to his disciples when he was alone with them. Receive this prayer inspired by Mark chapter four. God of small seeds and mighty plants, you take our meager lives with your love, cause them to produce acts of loving kindness for you in this world. You hear our cries and find us when we are lost and wandering in fear. You bring us home with you so that we may be made whole, rejoicing in your goodness. Help us to joyfully serve you all our days, knowing that you are always watching over us. Prepare our hearts to receive your word and our spirits to respond in eagerness to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
live in a world that mostly believes what you see is what you get. For most of us, I suspect, this is our default attitude and orientation to other people, our relationships and circumstances of our lives. This approach certainly has its benefits. However, a what you see is what you get attitude assumes that life is limited to physical and tangible realities. It keeps us skimming across the surfaces of life. I remember taking my younger son to the bird park one afternoon when he was four or five years old. We walked the trails, talked, laughed, and played. Walking back to the truck, he said, do you see that bird on the pole? Yes, I said. He is red and very noisy. To me, it looked just like any other red bird, but not to Randy. He's talking to me, he said. He doesn't want me to leave. He wants me to stay here with you. He saw much more than a no than a, noisy, no, than a noisy red bird. He saw relationship, love, security, and contentment. He was willing to see in a different way. Too often, human seeing is outwardly focused and appearance-based. God's seeing, however, is inwardly focused and heart-based. For every outward appearance we see, there is a deeper inner reality. We're always being invited into a deeper seeing. That's what Jesus' parables are about. They give us a glimpse into God's kingdom, even as we look at the things of this world. Parables rarely give answers. Instead, they sharpen our focus and cultivate a deeper vision. Parables ask us to trust that what we see is not all there is. There's always something more going on than what we see. That something more is the kingdom of God. The red birds, seeds, and weeds of life are everywhere. Don't just look at what you see. Look at what is there. Look again if you need to. Look more deeply. Change how you see. Behind every red bird, seed, and weed is the faithfulness promise and power of God to change lives. This is a hymn called For the Fruits of This Creation by Fred Pratt Green. For the fruits of this creation, thanks be to God. For the gifts to every nation, thanks be to God. For the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while men are sleeping, future needs and earth safekeeping, thanks be to God. In the just reward of labor, God's will is done. In the hope we give our neighbor, God's will is done. In our worldwide, in our worldwide taking of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvest men are sharing, God's will is done. For the harvest of his spirit, thanks be to God. For the God, for the good all men inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us. Most of all, that love has found us. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
Our world seems pretty messed up. With all the things going on now, the pandemic, social unrest, the political conflicts, is the kingdom of heaven at hand? We seem to be at war with each other now more than ever. The kingdom of heaven seems far away. Why is it so hard to achieve God's kingdom here on earth? The answer lies in our human frailty. We all want what's best for our society. Unfortunately, our definition of what's best varies depending on our values in life, principles, and even our political leanings. First and foremost, we belong to the same human race. We are brothers and sisters. We are children of the one same and same God. We cannot look at each other and acknowledge the truth that neither side, why can we not look at each other and acknowledge the truth that neither side has the monopoly on good or evil? We must claim our goodness and stand for what we think is right. At the same time, we must also admit that we make mistakes and we have our own imperfections. Then we can look at our neighbors and realize that they are also imperfect, can offer some good too. Maybe we can learn from them. They are not the enemy. There's a story of a couple who always looks out the window at the laundry of their neighbor. The wife always tells her husband, their laundry is not very clean. They don't know how to wash correctly. Perhaps they need a better laundry soap. Her husband looks on and always simply nods. A few weeks later, the wife is surprised to see nice clean laundry on the line and said to her husband, look, they finally learned how to wash correctly. I wonder who taught them. The husband looked at her and said, honey, I got up early this morning and cleaned our windows. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it is not too late. All we need is to cleanse the window of our conscience so we can truly see each other for who we are, human beings, made and created in God's image. We all have our own goodness and our own sinfulness. We must learn from one another, and we can only do so by learning how to speak without screaming. We must learn from one another, and we can only do so um, by learning how to speak without screaming. To hold without pushing, to engage without hurting, and by doing, so, by doing these, perhaps, we will discover that the buried treasure, the fine pearl, is truly at hand. With some humility and a good ounce of charity, one step at a time, we will be closer to that most valuable end goal of bringing the kingdom of God in our midst.
a very old man with many a need planted his faith with a mustard seed. His garden was dying, he didn't know why. He said a small prayer, lifting his hands to the sky. He never thought twice, just watered it each day. Though insects and rodents buried their way into his garden and into his field. When a man applies faith, then a man has to yield. Yield to the Lord and trust in his care, seeing the plant as if it were there, unaware of the day, but never in doubt. A shoot from the, spe a shoot from the seed of the root shot out. It blossomed one day to a very large tree where people for miles would stop by to see its branches spread out to the birds of the air, reminding the man they were all in God's care. The rest of his garden was flourishing too. There was simply no limit to what God can do. In the shade of the tree, the old man would rest. He planted his tree and was put to the test. So what about you? Do you have any need? Then it's time to apply it by planting your seed. A friend posted on Facebook the other day that wheat, har that wheat harvest has already begun down in southern Kansas. While the harvest up in the Midwest might be a few weeks out, out yet, my friend's comments reminded me that the cycle of planting, cultivating, and harvesting follows a predictable pattern. The steps in the cycle follow the same order year after year. Lots of variables can affect the final outcome of each year's crop. Weather conditions, seed quality, disease, pests. But the cycle of planting, growing, and harvesting is still the same cycle that's been in place since God created plants. In today's gospel reading, Jesus uses the very familiar process of plant growth to teach some important lessons about the kingdom of God. Jesus told lots and lots of parables. These stories that drew on familiar everyday events and circumstances were his primary teaching tool. In the parable of the seed growing by itself, it is really about how the seed grows by itself without much help from the farmer who plants and harvests it. Growth is natural, and the farmer anticipates that every seed planted in the ground will grow. Growing is what seeds are designed to do, and Jesus said that Jesus says that that's what the God's kingdom is like. It just grows. This growth from seed to plant is inevitable, and we don't control the process. God does. The second parable about a mustard seed is meant to show us how the kingdom of God grows exponentially, from tiny beginnings to unexplainable size. How the focus is on the process of healthy, inevitable, unstoppable growth, from something small to something huge. The thing about parables, remember, is that they challenge us with truths that we might find uncomfortable. For example, if your idea of God's kingdom is pie in the sky, angels playing harps while resting on puffy clouds, you might not like the picture Jesus draws of the kingdom of God. Jesus says the kingdom is now. And watching that seed grow into fully ripe plant, into a fully ripe plant, isn't a passive thing. There's work for us to do. Getting the seed planted, growing in Christ, and helping with the harvest when the grain is ready. What does this look like in your everyday life? Every time you choose love instead of anger, every time you choose generosity instead of greed, every time you work for another's good instead of your own, you're participating in the kingdom of God. Every time you engage in the practices of Bible study, prayer, and service, you are participating in the kingdom of God. Every time you set aside your own agenda and ask God in all humility to show you his agenda or her agenda, you are becoming more and more like Christ. And as you grow with Christ's likeness, the kingdom of God is advancing. It is growing and it will not be stopped. Let everyone who has ears hear 
no matter how small or insignificant its beginnings may seem to you. The kingdom of God is here. It is growing in you and around you. Grab your sickle and get ready for the harvest. ever understand the miracle of your ways. We see your creation and we know you are God, yet we see your mighty kingdom formed with the humility of a servant. Faith and acts of kindness grow into great good. 
We will never comprehend how your kingdom comes, but we recognize its fruit. We see it, unexpe we see it in unexpected places, in sickness, in poverty, in conflict. We see it in the places we wouldn't want to live. Sometimes we see it in our own lives. Your kingdom come, Lord, in us and in your world. Feel the love of God growing within your heart. Go into God's world, planting seeds of love, mercy, joy, and peace in all that you say and do. Be at peace and serve God. Amen. <laughs>